So the topic today is understanding TH1, TH2 responses in the autoimmune patient and whether it makes a difference uh, relative to their case. I am Dr. Martin Rutherford. I'm a certified functional medicine practitioner and a chiropractor. Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractor. And today we're going to talk about a concept that has uh, at times, I think, been controversial. I think at times been uh, considered a theoretical. Uh, when I first got into functional medicine years ago, it was actually a prominent uh, concept right. Of, right. Of, of the immune system. And because what we started to realize was in chronic pain, we, we have a chronic pain practice for those of you who haven't uh, watched us before. And we treat just about anything that won't go away. <laughs> and we've combined two disciplines, uh, functional neurology and functional medicine to address fibromyalgia and peripheral and chronic fatigue and chronic gut problems, chronic <clears throat> thyroid problems, and dizziness, vertigo, balance, things that won't go away. People get things, they go away. Fine, they don't go away. They don't, you need to know why. And, and the immune system was uh, an obvious first place to start, I think, for, for those in the field at that time, that there must be something with the immune system that's causing the problem. There was a concept called TH1, TH2 shifts, TH1, TH2 balance. I've drawn the little seesaw uh, picture of it, uh, I think, a thousand times in, in trying to explain it to people. And I, and and I uh, and I think it's I don't I think Dr. Gates is going to explain to me today <laughs> whether it's getting more credibility or if it's just something that you're using more because you see it's a valuable tool because it is affecting people frequently. We'll talk about Dr. Gates does all the treatment now, and he's always researching and frequently he'll tell talk to me about how this was a th this was a shift during pregnancy. This is the mystical why do I get pregnant and then I feel good and then all of a sudden I don't after I deliver the child. It's, uh, this is the, if you, if you have allergies, you have a shift more towards one side than the other. So uh, in, in, in uh, certain uh, autoimmune problems have a certain quality to them as to these shifts. So maybe let's uh, discuss what a TH1, TH2 is, what a TH1, TH2 mechanism or, 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 or system is and and then and then these uh, these shifts from one side to the other and, and whatever else you're gonna surprise me with today <laughs> I found this out about like one second before we went on there so <laughs> so so my confidence level is a little low today <laughs> <laughs> my fault it's okay. Yeah. Uh, well, relative to TH1, TH2, like you said, it was a prominent concept in functional medicine, especially really upwards of 10 years ago now. And so a lot of doctors were doing things to try and figure out if basically one side of the immune system was too strong, one side of the immune system was too weak. If we could strengthen that weak side, could we correct autoimmune disease? And that was really the, the yeah. working question. And what we found is that it's far more complicated than that and but it is still something that has to be paid attention to also so kind of for the the understanding of th1 th2 we have to go back to the research think think of your immune system if you're an autoimmune disease patient as the military and the military has the air force side it has a marine corps side you probably heard us talk about this and then under each branch, you have generals, and then you have colonels, and then you have lieutenant colonels, on and on and on down the ranks. And think of the guys down here, they're the messengers, so to speak. They're the ones communicating back and forth, saying, hey, this is over here, let's do that, and relaying a lot of messages. Well, your immune system is much the same way, and all these ground troops, so to speak, are referred to as cytokines. And the cytokines basically may go up, like if there's a, if you have rheumatoid arthritis, cytokines may go up, if you're TH1 dominant. Maybe you want to tell them what TH1 means. So TH1 and TH2 mean T helper cell one, T helper cell two. So your thymus makes immune cells uh, largely. And so your thymus helps to program if somebody's gonna be a T helper cell, a T helper, T helper cell one, T helper cell three, T regulatory cell, all these different things, your thymus and other parts of your immune system are programming these issues lots of times early in life. 
but circumstances throughout life, environmental factors, epigenetics are the key terms that you're gonna hear there, will help to program your immune system in another direction. And that's one of the prevailing theories as to why autoimmune disease is so much more common now, because there's some sort of environmental trigger that's happening with our population that's causing our immune system to not be as competent. So leading theories include that we're too clean, that we're not, you know, we're not in the dirt, we're not battling parasites all the time, which is really how our immune system is meant to form. Some researchers were giving Crohn's patients, they were actually giving them parasites to see if that would help their immune system to attack the parasite and not their intestines. These are just examples. And so that's important for you to understand. So we have the clean hypothesis, too many antibiotics, vaccinations, uh, food supply issues, stress. All these things are being discussed about in the literature relative to why we are kind of getting this pandemic of autoimmune problems in our society. And so in understanding Th1, Th2 further, um, when they did research on this, they found that, for example, conditions like rheumatoid arthritis and multiple sclerosis were Th1 dominant versus allergies, allergic disorders, your eczema patients, those of you um, who sneeze all the time and have hay fever, you're Th2 dominant. And in the research, they then started working with animals and they took they can induce rheumatoid arthritis in a mouse, for example, and they would feed that mouse joint tissue and the mouse's rheumatoid arthritis would go away, which is pretty wild. And what they discerned is that you have this huge Th3 regulatory system in your gut. 70% of your immune system is in your gut, right, according to the probiotic commercials. And so they found that this Th regulatory system in your gut has tremendous impact on autoimmune disease, hence why a lot of functional medicine practitioners, and now it's like all the rage for us to talk about diet for autoimmune problems. And so one of the key factors that boosts Th3 uh, regulation is vitamin D. That's one of the big ones. And for those of you who have chronically low vitamin D, it may be because your immune system is so out of balance, the vitamin D is getting chewed up trying to balance your immune system. They did the same experiments with MS in a mouse. So they took these little mice, induced experimental autoimmune encephalitis, that's MS in a mouse, and they fed them brain tissue and then the MS went away in the mice. So it's very interesting. Unfortunately, these studies have not panned out in humans. Of course, it's kind of a little disgusting to think of it that way, you know, eating brain tissue, but it hasn't worked in human beings because our immune system is just more complicated than a mouse uh, is. So we have that element. And then we have the whole element of, well, let's boost the weak side like I alluded to before. And what they found is that, and certain herbs do this, Herbs are one That's of the most powerful things. That's how we started out, and I remember having tremendous success, and I remember having tremendous failure. In fact, mm -hmm. I was... You were I, one of the ones that got really sick. I was one of the ones who got really sick when I'm they tried this. to uh, uh, boost my TH2 system, and I was sick for about two and a half months. Mm -hmm. I had other patients who walked in here, full-blown fibromyalgia. We used the herbs and botanicals. So the TH1 system, in theory, simplifies. Simply is more like your is more like viruses and it's more like your Marine Corps side of the immune system. Yeah, so it does mono kills. mono combat. Typically, Th one patients don't get sick a lot. They don't get the seasonal colds. Right. And so, so uh, they, they tried to boost my Th two system and with herbs and botanicals and stuff that I had just used on another patient was miraculously successful. And then on me, I became ill for almost two and a half months, moderately ill. I had already had autoimmune problems that that we were aware of, and 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 it and it, and it was something that um, yeah. uh, exacerbated my immune responses. So learning lessons for us yeah. in the alternative care world, yeah. Yeah, our ongoing clinical trials it brings back memories. But yeah, um, and then for the Th two. So, anyways, with the Th one mediated illnesses, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, multiple sclerosis. They tried giving Th2 stimulators. It really didn't work because there's some bi-directional communication between these cytokines down here. So if you give somebody who's Th1 dominant a Th2 stimulator, lots of times you actually stimulate the Th1 side too. Whereas with Th2 illnesses, they have found that there's more credibility to stimulating the weak side. So for those of you who have the allergic disorders, 
Um, the thought process is using things like vitamin C or ginsengs to help boost that TH1 side. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just telling you what the research has talked about in terms of the cytokine balance. And now the other aspect is the TH17 system. It's been known for a while. It's not completely well understood. Dr. Vajdani, he was really talking about it a lot. I think before I saw other people talking about it, Dr. Vajdani is the founder of Cyrex Laboratory. So he's a big time Im immunologist, especially in the functional medicine, functional neurology world. And so the TH17 system is like your evil dictator. And it likes to promote inflammation. It likes to keep autoimmune illnesses going. And so what we're finding is that this TH17 system really is turned on on a lot of autoimmune problems and especially Lyme disease. So for all of you Lyme sufferers, if there are any of you watching this broadcast or if you know somebody with Lyme disease, you may wanna share this and our other broadcasts on Lyme disease because the current literature is coming out showing that it's an immunosuppressive illness and it's an autoimmune illness. First you get immunosuppressed and then it turns into autoimmune basically. And so once the TH17 gets going, then you have this inflammatory problem and and then the real trick becomes how do you dampen all of this? And that's, you can go back and watch our other broadcasts. Clearly the gastrointestinal tract has tremendous importance. Every food intolerance you have, what's the bacterial relationship like in your intestines? Are you spilling pieces of inflammatory bacteria into your bloodstream? Stress, what factors are breaking down your intestines and the chronic stress response we see to be the most neglected element in the alternative and functional medicine, functional neurology world. And then yes, there's the infamous heavy metals and things of that nature, but um, molds, things of that nature. But we frequently find that practitioners will go down one rabbit hole pretty deep. So, you know, you have your heavy metal guy and you have your mold lady and I'm not being gender specific, just examples. And they, that's all they focus on and that's all they think the illnesses are. In reality, it's a confluence of all of them. You have to see, does the individual have a history of heavy metal exposure? Are they actually being exposed to mold? Things of that nature. So that's kind of the story, I think, on TH1, TH2. Anything that you think we should further discuss mm. or elaborate? No, no, I think it's a complex subject. It really this is. This is a complex subject mm -hmm. to, to, to try to do in like 15 minutes. I'm not sure. Um, you, you, you've gone for a long time on this. It, yeah, I think that probably covers it to a degree. I mean, it, I guess, I don't know how many people are actually going to be out there searching TH1, TH2. Those of you who are searching this, we're assuming that you have some understanding of the concept or that you've been exposed to it maybe by someone like me 10 years ago mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and either got miraculously better or got miraculously worse and wanted to know why. And, 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 and the complexities are, uh, are multifold, I guess, just to, just to say what Dr. Gates just enumerated was there's a lot of different factors. And what we have found is, is that you have to make your best effort, to determine what all of, which of those factors are present in that particular person. And then when Dr. Gates indicated that, for example, one doctor may go down the heavy metal rabbit hole or the, or the it's all parasites rabbit hole or, or, or so on and so forth. It's because it's not really the model out there at this point in time to do a comprehensive workup. Uh, histories are scant. Uh, we take a 22 page history. We have the patient fill out a 22 page history relative to chronic conditions. And it illuminates a lot of these factors. Then I've already taken a brief history. <laughs> if you want to call a half an hour brief history uh, prior to that, to see if that person has the types of problems that we have, and then to start to categorize them. And then uh, during the exam, Dr. Gates takes a further specific history. May seem like a lot of uh, over, overwhelm or like overkill, but it's not because you have to determine which of these factors are there in this particular patient, frankly, before you execute the case. 
if you want to be able to get a, 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 a relatively efficient and, and substantial result, one, one that will last. And, and, it, and it's hard to get that if you're playing, uh, with all due respect, you know, like whack-a-mole. Like, okay, we're going to do this. That didn't work. Okay, now we're going to give you that. Okay, that worked. Okay, but this is still left, so let's try that. But now this came back. And this is and this topic is is to, to try to put it in, in more uh, uh, lay terms. This topic of TH1, TH2, TH3, TH17, and the, and the play between all these is kind of why that occurs. Uh, so so from that perspective, it's one of the, the uh, I'm sure it's one of the intentions of, of, of kind of bringing that to you. So really, to me, that's kind of the the, the everyday commonsensical maybe commonsensical is not the word i'm trying to use but uh the the takeaway of of th1 th2 th3 th17 if you have uh chronic problems you have probably have an autoimmune problem dr gates <clears throat> said that he fa finds that the uh stress response is the most underestimated i don't know if it's underestimated as much as people think that the common adaptocrine is going to take care of it mm -hmm. Uh, and, and 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 it's and, and most of the patients aren't really just stressed. Most of our patients are like in post traumatic stress syndrome, and all these pieces need to be put together in the framework of this TH one, TH two, TH three. Which is still, is it still by some still kind of considered a a theory as opposed well, it's to? It's considered a hypothesis because a hypo unless you hypothesis. can utilize it and create a treatment from it, then it's not holding validity. Right. So that's where. It's all throughout the literature. It's just saying, you know, we can't give rheumatoid arthritis patients TH2 boosters, like something like resveratrol, and get them better. Well, but there's still a lot of information on it. Whereas, like I talked about with the TH2 dominant ones, you can boost that side. It seems to produce something. Yeah. So if you follow that procedure, okay, we're going to do one thing for the TH2, you're going to get inconsistency, and it's going to be a theory. It's going to be, it's, it, but if you, if you understand the, the nuances of all the different aspects of it and you can get a concept of it in that patient before you execute care, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, a, it's a valuable tool for an astute clinician who is, who is aware of this, uh, this concept and can use it to the benefit of the patient. Would that be fair mm -hmm. to say? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's all I have to say. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we will see you next week. You can uh, go to Power Health Consult if you want any more information, powerhealthtalk.com. Send us your feedback on YouTube. We can't take specific, specific individual questions, but if you have a question that you want us to talk about, send them to us and we'd be happy to go over it. So thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.